very big pick. I don't know if that's of interest, but um, I feel like with the, with the pick's bigger, I, I can do less work, so it kind of just, oh, it kind of just glides. O sea, él dice que me, yo tengo un amigo bastante grande, y dice, creo que eso me ayuda a hacer un esfuerzo para tocar. Y también cuando toco uno de los acordes, yo uso uno de los acordes, yo uso uno de los acordes, yo uso uno de los acordes. Es por el acorde, es por el acorde. Es por el acorde, es por el acorde, es por el acorde, es por el acorde, es por el acorde. Es muy simple, pero yo estoy muy... I no one told me that growing up. I always I worked a lot on right hand and a lot on stuff, and I, I don't think it was healthy. Entonces, quiero pasar esta clase de información porque yo era joven, estaba practicando, me lo pasaba haciendo mucho ejercicio. Yo creo que fue muy saludable, sin embargo, esto es un poco de la gente que me dio la visión. Y el mismo con los acordes. Si tú has hecho eso, estas cuerdas, es como si tú usas tu mano para hacer eso. You just have to remember that it's it's just one, 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 always one, never two things. Entonces lo mismo haría con si fuera este motor, yo sostengo la cuerda por la izquierda, pues por la derecha, y haciendo esto, que se mantenga nivelado hacia abajo, no es que nivelado hacia abajo. Yeah. So one other thing that I know you had a question. That's right. But to me, it's very important. To remember that your guitar has a weight to it. So what I mean by that is I'll spend a lot of time kind of balancing the instrument or feeling. I don't know. It has to. It has to. Um, it's never just stuck. It's never like uh, fixed. It's all. It always kind of falls into my hands. Entonces paso mucho tiempo también balanceando el instrumento porque los músculos me toca para la pieza. Entonces es una manera de concentrarme. Yeah, you see, it's like you're holding a baby. <laughs> you, you're always modulating how you address. I see a lot of guitar players thinking their guitar is way lighter. So they, there's, they're not letting. You can hear it in their sound. It's kind of a light sound. And if you watch like a video of Segovia or something. The guitar seems like it's about 400 pounds. It's the main one video that's a go, yeah, I don't know if it's like a guitar that's about 400 pounds. And it sounds like it's about 400 pounds. So play with it. I mean, you can just, I mean, just every which way you can really know how to finish out your instrument. That's huge. Entonces él dice que es muy importante que usted se acostumbre al peso de su instrumento para cuando vaya a tocar en vivo, que usted no se quede sin tramita bien, que usted se sienta atrás. Así que eso es solo una cosa. He visto que no hay procesos nuevos. Uno utiliza mucho apego, pero no es alineado. Okay. What's it about your appreciated technique? This is that you don't play your pages in a very long way, so you can skip strings in some section. Yeah, open voice. Try it. So he wants to have to make it some practice. That's exactly what I'm doing. But it's a, to show you I, uh, a lot of. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I. Um, C major, these are tribes going to C major C. And you went. That would be one way to practice it. Okay, so to say you have to sort of get a little mayor. Ahí empieza el instrumento, entonces él va subiendo y bajando y también alterando la forma que él ejecutaba las cuerdas. Y just to focus on that for a second, you can, uh, I like going up one direction and down the next, so be like a... Entonces la manera que me gusta practicar 
aplicar a esto que haciendo no mejor de la siguiente. So if you have this, which is C E G, and you take the, the middle note and put it up an octave, it becomes C G E. So it's called an open voice track. So if you were to do that same arpeggiation as far as the attack in the kicking goes, it would be in So a lot of times I'm just doing that. I'm just sort of taking a voice and, uh, and taking a middle voice and putting it up and up. So practice is slow. If you haven't done this before, just very slow until you feel until it feels comfortable. And then you can do, you can start messing with it. Where you would say, just, let's say go low, high, middle. Just with your fingers, you go. Where 
dice que esto es una de las cosas que me importa mucho el guitarrista para aprender. O sea, las notas, las notas, las notas, las notas. Ok, so see, so this should be a lot. You don't have to be overly tough. But uh, that needs to be true. That's how you would practice a scale. You wouldn't do, you would just do, kind of find your own patterns. Entonces, así que le recomiendo que no te hagas cara, no secuenciado, como todos sabemos, sino más o menos empujando un camino de subir y bajar en ese rango. Yes. So what's interesting? 
interesting is like you start. So it's one big A major thing. So if I see B minor triad, that's part of A major, right? So so I'm kind of focusing on on that, but I'm, it's all within the key. So then I'm going to do the same thing on the So then I can focus on each major. Kind of, I think of the hand as opening like this. It, it's, it, 
it unfurls in that direction, the direction of the guitar. This is kind of how the hand works. This is not the hand that the flat. So this is what's kind of crazy is that to me this is one. That's your first finger. But I mean, that's a little one. Which is bad. Reverse from a lot of people, right? Because you think of this as one. For me, everything starts at the pinky. Para mí todo empieza por el piñique, ese es el dedo uno para mí. Aquí la cara de mucha gente, que es el You can start here, all that, but that's not home for me. That feels very locked up. So, if I'm here, to me it feels like this is the home. That makes any sense. Entonces cuando estés en una posición, el dedo uno, no sé otro, me siento raro. Me siento que cuando llega el piñique, esa es la raíz para mí. Because I can, you can kind of rest on the so ideally the thumb is free to move, it shouldn't be the anchor. So I used to play where the thumb was always the anchor. But I got so much tension through here that it was, it's, it was awful. I couldn't play at all. So, so you should see, if I were to play something even more speedy, this would just watch the back of it. way to get into it. It's just hold, leave things in place while other things move. Yeah, counterpoint doesn't mean both lines have to be the same. They can be like, uh, yeah. But slow. To, it says slow, 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 slow. <laughs> Please. Yeah, exactly.
what happened last night is out of the use the Buddha and the Melodia and the Vata. What's very important is to play it in time. Keep the tempo. You know, it's rather than... No, like that can't even have to... You find this, even if that means you're playing it... Really, whatever, as slow as you can keep the tempo. And then what you can do, this is kind of this ex expedited course in a second, because you can spend a lot of time with it, is then let the bass line start improvising with the bass and where it drifts into the, the alto and tenor voices. So, Para mí, 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 para mí